What we set out to do was not do what you see in, in so many other platforms where the apps are these silos and they barely know about each other. They go through tiny APIs to do things. We had this bold notion that apps should work together as a web of apps on your machine. That when you get additional apps, they, the system just gets richer and richer. So that when I add an app and I can share out, other apps know how to pull information from my app. If I want to pull information from apps, I just do so without having to know in advance all the apps that are on a person's machine. And then you can experience this across devices, as we showed with syncing, and across the PC architectures. No compromise for form factors, whether it's a desktop, a laptop, or one of these Windows tablets. We didn't show it because it's hard to project, but you can rotate these, you can use them in any proportions, and we'll talk a lot more about, about the different form factors um, in a little bit. So that's just, that's just one of the demos for today, and that's the Windows 8 experience. But now let's talk about what it's like to build those applications. This is the build conference, and so now we're going to build them. What's the Windows 8 platform going to look like? OK, well, here is the platform that all of you know. This platform is, the best way to say it is uh, it's extremely rich, and it's extremely riddled with feedback from you over how these different parts don't exactly always work together. Uh, we've got the C Sharp and VB world built on top of .NET and Silverlight. We've got the C and the C++ world built in the, 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 the strong Win32 API. And then we've built the silo of HTML, JavaScript on top of Internet Explorer. And I think I've gotten a few pieces of mail and a few tweets and a few other things about how these things don't always all work so well together. So what I want to show you is the bold move we made to reimagine the Windows 8 platform. So the Windows 8 platform for Metro-style applications lets you pick the language that you want to use to build your applications. Whenever, no matter what tool you want to use, we've got a language for you and a way to write that software. The way that we do this is we start off with the Windows kernel. The Windows kernel is the most robust, reliable, scalable kernel that exists, and we're very proud that we're bringing it forward. And that's the work that we do on fundamentals, whether it's networking and connectivity, or uh, process and scheduling, and all the fundamentals of the operating system, some of which will be on display later. What we've done is we've reimagined the Windows APIs, and we call them the Windows Runtime, or WinRT. WinRT provides over 1,800 different objects for you to use to build your applications. First, there's an application model. That application model supports low power. It supports the full screen and immersive applications. And it supports this modern way of building software. There are communication and data objects, graphics and media, devices and printing. And all of these together are natively built into Windows. This is not a layer on top of Windows. This is Windows. It's all native code built to reflect in different languages. So you have the WinRT APIs and objects. And then we reflect those in C and C++, in C Sharp and VB. And you could do your view in XAML if that's what you want to do. You could also see those APIs reflected in, in JavaScript. And then you could use HTML and CSS to define your view. All of these work together in a unified tool set. You pick the language that you want to use, and you can build your own Metro-style applications with Windows 8. And we've done a huge amount of work to reimagine the whole way that we think of tools, languages, and the platform so that they're all coming together in a unified story for you. At the same time, we're bringing forward all of the skills that you've established and all of that code that you've figured out. We are going to show you how you can move all of that forward and be part of the Metro-style APIs. So the best way to do that, I think, is to just build an app. So let's uh, bring up Antoine LeBlanc. He's the senior vice president who runs our Windows app store. And so we're going to start by building the app, and then we're going to get it up to the store. And so let's bring Antoine out and welcome him to build some apps. All right. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to show all of you how amazingly easy it is with the new platform and the new tools to actually build these great Metro-style apps. So I'm going to jump right in here. And what I'm going to do is start uh, Visual Studio 11 Express. So this is a new version of Visual Studio that's designed to make it super easy to build <laughs> kinds of apps. Um, 
I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit new project here. And right here, you're gonna notice something that Steven just talked about, which is the availability of all these different languages. So the platform's essentially agnostic to the language that you decide to use. So you can pick the language and the technologies that you're most familiar with or you think are more applicable to the kind of app you're building and just use that. I just wanna dwell on this for a second. So there you have these templates that are standard and then you can just scroll through and pick the language you wanna start with and you're gonna get the same templates in each one. That's exactly right. The Windows RT just supports all the language out of, out of the gate. Exactly. So in particular, you know, this, this sort of bold bet that we've made to bring these web technologies like uh, HTML and JavaScript to the platform really are going to enable millions of web developers that exist today to participate in this amazing new opportunity to build these apps for Windows. Um, Stephen did point out these templates a little bit. You see here that we actually have some pre-built templates in the tool that lets give you a great way to get started. These are fully functioning Metro-style apps um, that give you a great starting point. But what we're going to do here is we're going to build a uh, sort of a web, a web app or a JavaScript version starting from a blank application. I'm going to show you how incredibly easy it is to do this. So we're going to call my app app Photo Doodle, and I'm going to just uh, give it a name, hit OK, and what the tool is going to do here is it's going to create basically a small template app, and I'm going to describe what you're seeing really quickly. If you're a web developer, this is going to look incredibly familiar to you and super simple. I have a default.html file for my markup, for my semantic markup. If you look at what's in there right now, it's all the normal stuff that you have at the top of an HTML file. I have a default.css file that's basically there for my styling rules. And then I have a default.js file for the script behind the HTML file. So we're going to start building something here. Um, I'm going to jump right in here into the body of the HTML, and I'm going to insert um, just three lines of HTML stuff. So we're going to use a couple snippets for this big demo just because, well, we don't want to You don't want to watch me type. That's right. So there's basically just three HTML elements in here. There's a heading tag that has just, it's going to stick the, the title of my app at the top. Then I have this uh, canvas element, which if you're an HTML5 developer, you know what this is. This is one of the cool new things in HTML5. It basically gives you a 2D drawing surface that you can use. Um, and then just a button that we're going to stick at the, bo at the bottom of, that, uh, of, that, uh, of the HTML page. I'm going to go into the CSS file and just uh, put a couple of styling rules in here. All I'm doing is setting the background color for the canvas so that we can actually see it on the screen, and also setting the uh, typeface size for the, for the, for the heading. Um, I'm going to write a tiny bit of code here. Now this, you'll see here that uh, in the template, it gives me some you know, very clear guidance on where I should stick my code. So I'm just going to call an um, initialization function here. And what I'm going to do is just insert it here. And I'll show you really quickly. All I'm doing here is basically um, capturing the mouse, move, the mouse events on the canvas and hooking them, and then drawing lines between all the mouse move points. And that's going to let me just sort of scribble on my canvas. So, uh, 23 lines of code and, or something. And this code is straight HTML5. It would run in a browser if you That's want. exactly right. I'm going to run this right now. And this, it's going to run, you know, it's going to run locally here in Windows 8. But I could take those things, hoist them on a web server, point my browser to them, and they would just run, uh, run like that. So I just hit build and run here. And what it's doing, by the way, this is interesting. It's JavaScript. So it's not compiling it. It's not linking it or doing anything like that. All it's doing is it's packaging all that stuff up, installing it on the system, and running it. So we have a, a new format, an app package, that you'll learn a lot about uh, over this week. That's exactly right. So here's my little app. It's not particularly beautiful, but you can see I can touch on it, and the scribbling works, and I can use. Um, one thing that's interesting is I can use the mouse. I even, have, uh, I even have a stylus here, and I can use that. And you'll notice I didn't have to write any special code. Actually, the input stack in the platform does a lot of clever work to make all those things look the same and work the same. Um, so let's go back. It's, you know, this is nice, but it's just basically a web app. It's not, not particularly Metro style, but it's OK, context. go. Yeah, yeah, anytime you want to applause. Um, so, so let's, let's, let's metrify this a little bit here. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to um, just insert a couple lines in my initialization function here. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to insert just some initialization code for the button. So all this is doing is hooking the click event on the button. And I'm going to go write a little function that, that's going to get called when my click event gets, um, when, my, when I get that click event. So I'm going to scroll up and show you what I put. So this is sort of the first bit of real Windows 8 code that you're going to see. And what I'm trying to do here is I want the button to bring up a file picker dialog so I can go pick a photo and actually just stick it in that canvas. That way I can, I can scribble on it. Um, and if you look at this first line of code here, what you see me doing is actually calling into the, Windows, into the Windows Runtime API. And what it's doing is it's creating a file open picker object. This is going to look really familiar to you if you've ever written, you know, called the common file dialogs or anything like this. Um, what it does is it just creates the object. It's, it initializes it by giving it a start location. 
telling it the kinds of files that I want. So here we're looking for image files, setting the default view to thumbnails, and then it brings the thing up, and, it's good, and then async, basically I can act with it asynchronously. And when, when I've picked a file, it's going to just open it and then basically take the bitmap and put it in the canvas. So this is just a, a native control that you can call on from the Windows runtime, and we're calling it here from JavaScript, but you can call it from any language. That's right. So let's do one more little bit of uh, Windows, you know, Windows 8 magic here. I'm going to initialize um, something called this, uh, this uh, data transfer object. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to enable um, the client. So Julie showed sharing between applications. So I'm going to show you how easy that is. I'm just initializing this object here, and I'm setting up a function that's going to get called when share gets invoked on this application. Um, so Let's write the code for that. Again, same kind, this is, I mean, this is four lines of code. It's super simple. I'm creating this object. It's registered, I'm creating this object, and then when it's gonna get called, I'm gonna take the bitmap out of, the, out of my canvas and then basically pass it on to the system. So um, I'm gonna run this now, and now you're gonna see something a little bit better. So I'm gonna go click on pick photo, and here are my photos on my system. Um, That's, so you now have the full touch, touch first photo picker. Exactly. Wait, um, wait, wait, wait. Um, you can see, as Julie showed, I can go into, for example, my, I can go into uh, Socialite is basically a little client for Facebook. So right there, I can go pick photos that I, have pasted, that I actually have in my Facebook photos li photo library. I mean, do you see what we just did? Like, no, with just a couple lines of code with the standard file dialog, you're now actually pulling photos from Facebook because that client, that sample application that logged into Facebook was on the system. You didn't have to know it was there when you wrote that, when you wrote your app. That's right. We didn't, we didn't write a line of networking code. So no networking no code. I don't know the Facebook API or anything like that. It's pretty amazing to be able to just do that. So I'm going to pick a photo here. Um, and here's a little photo of my dolphin. And I'm just going to scribble on it a little bit. Maybe put, uh, I don't know, put some mustache. sharks in there or something. Oh. Give him a mustache. Um, <laughs> Maybe draw a sun, okay. Um, and then I'm gonna share this out. So I'm gonna swipe from the right. Here's my share charm. I'm gonna click on it. There's social ads. So I'm gonna basically post it on my Facebook page. And I'm gonna go, you know, shark. I don't know, what, what, does a, what sound does a scared dolphin make? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so there we go. And then I can just hit share in Facebook. And what it's doing now, actually, so now it's transferring that picture over. Actually, it's doing it asynchronously. And look, this was incredibly simple. Again, this was like four lines of code that I wrote. So, it's super cool. But, it's not particularly Metro-y. It, well, it doesn't look very good. The layout's all messed up and all that stuff. So let's go try and fix that. And we're gonna fix that with uh, a tool that you guys might have heard of before. I'm gonna open this in Expressions Blend. Now, those of you who know Blend are gonna go, well, what are you doing? Blend is a tool for editing XAML. It's not a tool for editing HTML. Well. A new version of Expression Blend basically takes all the great stuff that it can do with XAML and does it and is able to do it with HTML and CSS as well. Okay, so here, here we are, here we are in Blend. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start, but let's start making this look better. So I'm gonna go to this assets tag tab, and what you're gonna notice here is a long list of pre-built controls that are really there to allow you to enable sort of a lot of these, me these metro behaviors and these metro looks that we have that, that are part of the design language for the application. So these are all the, all the Windows runtime metro style controls. And later this afternoon, you'll get to explore all of them throughout the course of building a big long app. That's right. And they work with HTML apps and HTML and JavaScript apps and the same set of controls work with XAML based apps. We'll talk about that in a second. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert an app bar. So this is the little bar that sits at the bottom and swoops up and down. Um, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it uh, dismissible and transient, so that's the thing that makes it actually swoop. Um, I'm gonna come back here, and what I wanna do is I wanna take that button that's right down here, and I wanna put it inside my bar. And the way I'm gonna do that, actually, I'm gonna go into the DOM Explorer on the left. This is actually a clever little thing. If you think about what it's doing, it has to interpret what the code does to actually generate this DOM, because the DOM gets generated at runtime. Um, and I'm just gonna drag it into the app bar. So the app bar is just a div on the HTML page. That's right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just, I'm going to switch back over here and I'm going to change the display, the, the position to make it absolute. And that way I can just kind of drag this button to where I want it and make this look the way I want. 
Okay, so, so far so good. The button is where we want it. Um, the other thing I'd like to do actually is to center this, this, uh, this canvas. So this is, if you've written, if there are web developers in the room and you've written, written web apps, this is where things get a little funky, a little hard. When you're trying to lay out an application in a world where browser windows can be dragged and, and resized, it gets really hard. People do this with all sorts of, you can write tons of JavaScript to react to the events and relay out things. You can use tables, a lot of people use tables, but the tables were really never designed to do layout that way. And, and this is really important for, for Windows 8 Metro style apps because you can rotate and, and we support all these different re aspect ratios and layouts. So using this HTML5 uh, proposed standard for grid is gonna be really cool. That's right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually lay out this body using this new CSS layout that we're, that we're working on called a grid. And I'm gonna define my grid. So I've set the body to be grid, I'm gonna define it as just a simple one by one grid. Um, and that's going to allow me, so now I've got, I've got it defined. And now I can take my canvas object, and I can just say, I can just center it within the grid. So we're center here, center here, and now it's centered within the grid. So maybe that's, it seems like, okay, that's a lot of work maybe to just, I could have just made an absolute position and dragged it into the middle. But as Steven mentioned, uh, you really have to deal with the different states that the app can be in. In fact, the tool gives me some really cool ways to do that. I don't, you know, as a developer, I might not, I might just have a laptop that I'm working on and maybe it doesn't, I can't rotate the screen or I don't have, you know, these apps need to be able to work on these high DPI, 27 inch screens, things like that. Um, the tool makes it really, really easy to see these different states. So for example, here's portrait. Um, here's uh, a snap view, for example, when I drag the application to the left side of the screen. Here's the other, the opposite side of it, what we call the flip view. And I can see that the app actually does exactly what I want and, and, and reacts very well to those changes. And, and you can explore it at different resolutions and preview it all throughout. Exactly. So we really made it easy to build these Metro style apps so that they work in the environment that your customers will have. Right. Right, so I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna save the changes I made, we're gonna go back into Visual Studio, reload these things, and I'm going to build and run again. And now you're gonna see, here's my app, the canvas is centered, it still works, I can, sw I can swipe up and get the app bar up, here's my pick photo button, and it all works perfectly. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with this. This, by the way, was 58 lines of code. Try writing that in another platform on another, in, with, I, I challenge you to do that in only 58 <laughs> lines of code. Um, so I'm happy with my app. What I'd really like to do, Stephen early on talked about the number of Windows users who are out there. Obviously, um, I would love to be able to share my app with millions and millions of-, of Hundreds of, of millions. Hundreds, well, millions and millions, yes. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm actually gonna post this app to the new Windows store. Um, you might have noticed here there is a store menu in Visual Studio, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and I'm going to uh, pick Upload Package. So what this is going to do is this basically packages up my app into the, 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 the default uh, package format for, for, window, for new apps. And this takes me to the onboarding portal for the, for the store. So this is the part of the portal where I would fill out all the information about my app, descriptions, screenshots, all sorts of things like that. I've actually filled out a bunch of this stuff already, so you don't have to watch me do it. Uh, but I did leave this one section empty, which is the selling details. And this is the part where I can pick a price for my app. I'm gonna, let's make it eight bucks. It's Windows 8, right? Um, <laughs> you think I'm optimistic? It's 58 lines. I think you're cheesy. <laughs> um, now, one thing that's interesting, um, there's, you know, there's a rich licensing model that's built into the app format itself. So I'm not, I don't have to you know, do anything other than select the price and the licensing model makes sure that only people who bought the app can actually use it and you can't just pass them around and that as a developer your work is protected. One of the things that the licensing model actually allows is trials. So here I'm gonna pick a seven day trial. So this is gonna let people actually download my app and try it before they have to buy it. I'm gonna click a few more things here, uh, set the release, just say when it's ready to go, I, please, I want it released immediately. We'll set a, ca a category for it, put it in photos. Um, there is a checkbox here about accessibility. Obviously accessibility support's really important. So this reminds us to make sure that we've done all the right work to make our app accessible. Um, and I'm gonna hit save. Now as you can see, I've actually filled out all of the information for my application. Uh, and I'm gonna go click Submit to Certification. Um, so this is an interesting process. We are gonna have a certification process for our applications. Part of the promise of the store to users of Windows is that the apps that they're gonna get, to, get to use are gonna be safe, are gonna be high quality and all those things. And part of the way we do that is through this process. Um, these processes tend to be a little bit infamous at yeah. this point. There's a little bit of, you know, they, they sometimes feel like these, these bureaucratic black holes that things just kind of disappear in. So 
part of the way we've been thinking about this is we want to go out of our way to make this process as transparent as we possibly can. So part of what you're seeing here on the screen is actually we're going to do a really great job of showing you where in the process your app is. I'm we sort of made it so it's like ordering pizza. So you get all of the steps are really visible to you and you know exactly where your app is along the way. Exactly. One, uh, one thing that's worth pointing out here is there's a a technical compliance step in this, which is where we check the APIs and make sure that you're doing all the right things technically. This is typically one of those really opaque things that people don't really know what goes on, what get, gets checked. We're actually going to give developers all of the technical compliance tools so that they can actually run these in advance and know what the output is and just make sure that their app actually meets all the requirements there. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's go have a look at the store itself at this point. So you've got to sort of figure that time has passed. What I've actually done is I actually submitted this app before so that we already have it in the store, and I can show it to you. So I'm going to switch to this other machine here uh, and show you the store itself. So right up here at the top left, you'll see there's a store tile. I'm going to click on that and I'll show you that here I am in the Windows Store. Um, so this is, it's actually our design philosophy for the Windows Store has been to just keep it really, really simple and make it easy for people to browse and find the kinds of things they need, or if they know exactly what they're looking for, they can just search and go find that app specifically. Um, it's organized into sections. This first section that you see here on the left is called the Spotlight section, and that's a programmed section of the store. If you've used app stores or been you know, involved in app stores before, this is a really, really important area because it's a chance for us to highlight and spotlight apps that are new and noteworthy, things that we think are particularly cool and really great apps. Um, there's also an opportunity for us in there to do some program content around just thematic things. So for example, here we've built a build section in the store where we can put apps that are related to the, to the, to the build conference. As I scroll to the right here, as I move over to the right, you can see sections or categories. There's a games category and then there's a social category, entertainment and all those things. Um, I'm going to go back here and just drill into the games category. And what you see here is, again, is a really easy to browse list of games and apps that are in there. I can filter if I want. So if I want to go look at you know, paid apps or freed apps or something like that, that's all super easy to do. Um, one thing that's worth pointing out, by the way, I, these, this, this, uh, the, the store, of course, is an app. And it's a Metro style app built using all the Metro style controls. You'll notice the grid control and things like that that I'm using here. It's actually built using HTML and JavaScript. So if you think for a second that these web technologies aren't solid enough or performant enough to actually build really, really serious stuff with, we've taken an app that is really, really important, I yeah. think, to Windows and decided to build it using those technologies. And it works just fine. Um, no, it, more than fine. It's no, working great. it works <laughs> great, exactly. So I'm going to go back up to... Uh, to the top of the store here, and I'm going to drill into this build section, and this is where actually my Photo Doodle app is. So if you look at the bottom here, you can see that it's, uh, say, that it's in here, and I'm going to go click on the tile for it. And what you see here is what we call the app listing page. So this is actually a really rich page that gives you, as a developer, a chance to actually market your app. So you can do things like show, show so I'm going to scroll back down, show screenshots. Um, I can just, you know, give a nice rich description of what the app does, and I can really do, you know, do the best job I can at trying to sell the app. Also for consumers, consumers or for users of the store, it's a great chance to see what the app does and what the requirements are and things like that. So you see your app gets listed in this cool Metro style application that people can swipe through or you know, view on all of their screens and just have a great experience of being immersed in your application. That's right. So I'm going to hit try here and we're going to actually download the app and I'm going to go confirm. And so what you can see here, what it's doing is it's actually downloading the license and installing the app. It's already done. I'm going to go back to the start screen. If I go scroll over to the right, there it is. It's installed on my system. I can run it. There you go. Wow. Simple enough. One more thing. I'm going to show you one more thing in the store, thing. though. Yeah. Um, so we didn't, you know, it turns out we didn't just invent applications this week. What, people, yeah, like Win32 apps. Are people all have been place. writing Win32 apps. There are million, I mean, it's a big part of what makes Windows Windows is these millions of applications that people have written. So I'm going to go back to the store here and show you something. We actually have, I'm going to scroll over, let's see, where's... Um, the finance section. You'll notice down at the bottom left here, there's an app called Quicken. It's not a Metro style app. It's a, you know, it's a desktop app. I'm going to click on it. Here's a product. Here's an app description page for Quicken. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to list Win32 apps as well as Metro style apps in the store. Things that, something that's in, one interesting part of this is that we're not actually going to require, because a lot, there's been tons of investment around these things and, and, and all these apps, you know, these big apps, there's websites where they get sold and they have their own licensing models and all those things. We're not going to require people to actually rewrite those things in order to, lift, to have them in the store. So we're not going to force them to use our licensing right. model. Because we, 
we love the, we love the ecosystem that's around Windows applications, and we want to make sure that it blossoms in this world as well. Exactly. So in essence, what we're doing here is we're giving these Win32 apps a free listing service and exposing them to millions, you know, to all of the hundreds of millions of Windows users. Cool. Um, now you mentioned some stuff about XAML and things like that. What's up there? That's right. Let's talk about XAML for a second. Any XAML or Silverlight fans in the room? I, I think they're all sitting over, well, here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so this is something that probably looks familiar to you if you are a, uh, a Silverlight developer. This is actually Scott Guthrie's blog. Um, and a couple of years ago, he wrote this series of eight posts that basically described how to build this cool little Silverlight client app and end. It's a cool app because it actually shows off a lot about XAML layouts and XAML controls and data binding and network access and all those things. And so what I've done is I've actually downloaded the code from this app and just tried to build it in Windows. So what I'm going to do in Windows 8. So what I'm going to do here is just hit F5. This is just duck, this is downloaded straight off the um, off that web off the blog. And what you see is the app right here running in the. So it's running in the browser. This is the desktop browser IE10, which is it's, the same rendering engine as the IE10 that Julie showed you. Exactly. But this is a Silverlight app still, right? And um, it works exactly the same way it worked in Windows 7. One thing you'll notice, for example, though, is it's not, a, it's not a Metro app. So it doesn't, for example, the input stack doesn't give me touch access and things like that. Um, so, but it runs perfectly well because everything that runs on this Windows 7 PC is going to run on Windows 8 as well. Exactly, exactly. So it's part of the compatibility guarantees that we make. But what we'd really like to do is take this and make it a Metro-style app. So I'm gonna, what I've done here is um, I'm going to close this project and show you a different one that I've created that basically is just, um, I've taken all the files from that, pro from, that from, Scott's, from Scott's project and, mo and moved them into a Windows 8 uh, project. So now this isn't, you know, you wouldn't like, we're moving it from one runtime environment, Silverlight, to a different runtime environment, which is Windows 8. And the runtime environments are different. Um, and so you're not going to expect this thing to just compile, but how close do you think it's going to get? Well, it turns out actually that I've only, had made, I've only had to make a handful of changes to this. Um, there's some, and most of them are actually just namespace changes. Yeah. So, the, names, so the, the API changes are kind of reflected in the, these changes in the namespace. And you can see some of that here. It's really just, it just amounts to, to changing these using statements. Um, the other things I've changed in here are uh, actually the networking API is a little bit different. So the networking API in Windows is pretty sophisticated now because it gives you access to you know, 3G networks yeah. and these, all these things. So WinRT has a very broad networking API that you're able to tap into. And exactly. so you'll have to change that kind of code. Exactly. And then the last thing is actually this app launches uh, web pages in Silverlight. It does that through the browser. There's a launching API in Windows. Um, so I've only, basically, this is a handful of changes I've made. I mean, it's three places in this file, and then there's another namespace thing in another file. I'm going to go hit F5 and check it out. So now this looks pretty familiar, except that this is actually just a full-on Metro app. It's not running in the browser. Oh, we're not even close to done. <laughs> Um, so one thing, though, is, you know, it still looks, it doesn't really look like a Metro app yet. And it also doesn't do some of the things that make Metro apps Metro apps, you know, like, you know, participating in this web of apps and things like that. But so you still used all that code. I, exactly. I've reused, basically, all, I didn't change any XAML, I didn't change any, you know, I didn't change any of the data binding code. All that stuff just works. It just came across. Everything you know about that applies here. Um, what I'm going to go do is make one other small change here. So I'm going to go in actually into the XAML, and you can see right here is where we bind the data to that list box view. I'm just going to get rid of that, and instead I'm going to bind it to the, uh, the, to the, the Windows 8 grid view. So this is the grid view that I showed you in, in, in Blend earlier. It's a native grid view written in native code for, for Windows 8's Metro-style apps. Exactly. Um, I'm going to make one other small change here. I'm going to go into uh, this just the initial, the, this uh, C-sharp file, and I'm going to um, just write two more lines of code. And what this does is this is basically going to, this is going to allow me to actually activate the, to, to, to connect the search charm to this. So this I, is just another one of those contracts and two lines of code connects you up to search. Exactly. I need to do one other thing. I'm going to go into the app manifest and I'm just going to declare that it actually supports search. And there we go. So I've done that. Let's build and run this. Whoops. We're going to save my changes. Sorry about that. I'm going to build and run this thing again. Hey, and look at it now. That's wow. starting to look pretty cool. So now it's in my grid. Look at it. Scroll through it. Works great. Let's go over to the, uh, to, the, to the start page. And you can see here now if I do search and I type something like London, 
you'll see that actually image search is the second one from the bottom is now enabled. And I could just, I could just click on it if I can get my finger in the right place. And there it is, it got invoked there. Wow. Again. Now, doesn't Microsoft use XAML in one other place? There is one other place. And I'm going to switch to another machine and show you one more thing, the phone. So um, I took, again, this this, uh, Scott's files and turned them into, actually just copied them into a phone project. And here again, I made one small change, and it's actually that same place, the same code that we used to launch on the phone. It works a little bit differently. I'm going to hit F5. Oh, do I not? There we go. All set. One line of code. One line change. of code change. So we, what we showed you was using the Windows runtime made a really cool Metro app, but then that same code you could use across the different apps because it was just built on this rich XAML infrastructure. That exactly. You can, so yeah. all of your knowledge around XAML, around C Sharp, around Silverlight, and all that stuff, it just carries straight across to here and really lets you do things across all these different platforms in a really easy Plus, way. Plus, you can also write your applications in HTML5 and JavaScript all using these amazing new tools between uh, Developer Studio and, and Expressions Blend. Exactly. There Excellent. we go. Well, thanks so much, Antoine. Thanks, everyone. If you thought we scratched the surface with what Julie showed, we really just scratched the surface on the developer platform and tools. So